chapter 42 distribution of water chapter 1 the statement of Allah Ta'ala and we have made from water every living thing chapter 1 giving water in charity or as a gift and whoever thinks that giving water in charity or as a gift or by way of testament way of a testament is permissible whether it is divided or not narrated Saul bin Saad a tumbler full of milk or water was brought to the prophet who drank from it while on his right side there was sitting a boy who was the youngest of those who were present and on his left side there were there were old men the prophet asked oh boy will you allow me to give it yeah the rest of the drink to the old man the boy said O oh Allah's messenger I would not give preference to anyone over me, over me to drink the rest of it from which you have drunk so the prophet gave it to him narrated as Suri Anas bin Malik said that once a domestic sheep was milked for Allah's messenger while he was in the house of Anas bin Malik the milk was mixed with water drawn from the well in Anas house a tumbler of it was presented to Allah's messenger who drank from it then Abu Bakr was sitting on his left side and a Bedouin on his right side when the prophet removed the tumbler from his mouth Umar was afraid that the prophet might give it to the Bedouin so he said O oh Allah's messenger give it to Abu Bakr who is sitting by your side but the prophet gave it to the Bedouin who was to his right and said you, sh you should start with the one on your right side chapter 2 superfluous water should not be withheld from others narrated Abu Huraira Allah's messenger said do not withhold the superfluous water for that will prevent people from grazing their cattle their, their cattle narrated Abu Huraira that Allah's messenger said do not withhold the superfluous water in order to withhold the superfluous grass chapter 3 if one digs a well and somebody falls in it and dies narrated Abu Huraira Allah's messenger said no blood money will be charged if somebody dies in a mine or in a well or is killed by an animal and if somebody finds a treasure in his land he has to give one fifth of it to the government chapter 4 disputes and controversies about wells narrated Abdullah bin Masud the Prophet said whoever takes a false oath to deprive somebody of his poverty will meet Allah while he will be angry with him Allah revealed verily those who purchase a little gain at the cost of Allah's covenant and their oaths 377 Al Ashat came to the place where Abdullah was narrating and said what has Abu Abdur Rahman ye Abdullah been telling you this verse was revealed concerning me I had a well in the land of a cousin of mine the Prophet asked me to bring witnesses to confirm my claim I said I don't have witnesses he said let the defendant take an oath to oath then i said o oh allah's messenger he will take a false oath immediately then the prophet mentioned the above narration and allah revealed the verse to confirm what he had said see hadith number 692 chapter 5 the sin of him who withholds water from travelers narrated Abu Huraira 
Allah's Messenger said, There are three persons whom Allah will not look at on the day of resurrection, nor will he purify them, and theirs shall be a severe punishment. They are 1. A man possessed superfluous water on a way and he withheld it from travelers. 2. A man who gave a pledge of allegiance to a ruler and he gave it only for worldly benefits. If the ruler gives him something, he gets satisfied, and if the ruler withholds something from him, he gets dissatisfied. 3. And man displayed his goods for sale after the Asr prayer. And he said, By Allah, except whom none has the right to be worshipped, I have been given so much for my goods, and somebody believes him and buys them. The Prophet then recited, Verily, those who purchase a little gain at the cost of Allah's covenant and their oaths. 377. Uh, chapter 6 The Dams of Rivers Narrated Abdullah bin Asubair An Ansari man quarreled with Asubair in the presence of the Prophet about the Hara canals, canals which were used for irrigating the date palms. The Ansari man said to Asubair, Let the water pass. But as refused to do so, so the case was brought before the Prophet, who said to as O Subair, irrigate your land, and then let water pass to your neighbor. On that the Ansari got angry and said to the Prophet, Is it because he, Subair, is your aunt's son? On that the color of the face of Allah's Messenger changed because of anger, and he said, O Subair, irrigate your land, and then withhold the water till it reaches the walls between the pits around the trees. Subair said, By Allah, I think that the following verse was revealed on, the, on this occasion. But no, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you judge in all disputes between them. 465 Chapter 7 The land near the source of water to be irrigated first Narrated Urva When a man from the Ansar quarreled with as the Prophet said, O Subair, irrigate your land first and then let the water flow to the land of the others. On that the Ansari said to the Prophet, It is because he is your aunt's son. On that the Prophet said, O Subair, irrigate till the water reaches the walls between the pits around the trees, and then stop, yet let the water go to the other's land. I think the following verse was revealed concerning this event. But no, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you judge in all disputes between them. 465 Chapter 8 the land to be covered with water up to the ankles. Narrated Urva bin Asubair. An Ansari man quarreled with Asubair about a canal in the Hara, which was used for irrigating date palms. Allah's messenger ordered, ordering Subair to be moderate said, O Subair, irrigate your land first and then leave the water for your neighbor. The Ansari said, Is it because he is your aunt's son? On that the color of the face of Allah's messenger changed and he said, O Subair, irrigate your land and withhold the water till it reaches the walls that are between the pits around the trees. So Allah's apostle gave Subair his full right. Subair said, by Allah, the following verse was revealed in the in that connection. But no, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you judge in all disputes between them. 4.65 The sub-narrator Ibn Shihab said to Judai, another sub-narrator, 
the Ansar and the other people interpreted the saying of the Prophet, irrigate your land and withhold the water till it reaches the wall, the walls between the pits around the trees, as meaning up to the ankles. Chapter 9 The Superiority of Providing Water Narrated Abu Huraira Allah's Messenger said, While a man was walking, he felt thirsty and went down a well and drank water from it. On coming out of it, he saw a dog panting and eating mud because of excessive thirst. The man said, This dog is suffering from the same problem as that of mine. So he went down the well, filled his shoe with water, caught hold of it with his teeth and climbed up and watered the dog. Allah thanked him for his good deed and forgave him. The people asked, O oh Allah's Messenger, is there, a reward, is there a reward for us in serving the animals? He replied, Yes, there is a reward for serving any animals. There is a, yes, there is a reward for serving any animate. Narrated Asma bint Abi Bakr. The Prophet prayed the Eclipse Prayer and then said, Hell was displayed so close that I said, Oh my Lord, am I going to be one of its inhabitants? Suddenly he saw a woman, I think he said, who was being scratched by a cat. He said, what is wrong with her? He was told, she had imprisoned it, yeah, the cat, till it died of hunger. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar Allah's messenger said, A woman was tortured and was put in hell because of a cat which she had kept locked till it died of hunger. Allah's messenger further said, Allah knows better. Allah said to the, to the woman, You neither fed it nor watered when you locked it up, nor did you set it free to, the, to eat the insects of the earth. Chapter 10 The owner owed a tank or a leather water container. Narrated Saul bin Saad Once a tumbler full of milk or, or water was brought to Allah's messenger who drank from it, while on his right side there was sitting a boy who was the youngest of those who were present, and on his left side there were old men. The Prophet asked, O oh boy, do you allow me to give the drink to the elder people first? The, po the boy said, I will not prefer, prefer anybody to have my share from you, O Allah's Apostle. So he gave it to the boy. Narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, By him in whose hand my soul is, I will drive some people out from my sacred font on the day of resurrection, as strange camels are expelled from a private fruit. Narrated Ibn Abbas, the Prophet said, May Allah be merciful to the mother of Ishmael, if she had left the water of Samsam fountain as it was without constructing a basin for keeping the water, or said if she had not taken handfuls of its water, it would have been a flowing stream. A flowing stream. Jurhum, Jurhum, an Arab tribe, came and asked her, May we settle at your dwelling? She said, Yes, but you have no right to possess the water. They agreed. Narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, There are three types of people whom Allah will neither talk to nor look at on the day of resurrection. They are 1. A man who takes an oath falsely that he has been offered for his goods so much more than what he has what he is given. 2. A man who takes a false oath after the Oster prayer in order to grab a Muslim's property. And 3. A man who withholds his superfluous water. Allah will say to him, Today I will withhold my grace from you as you withheld the superfluity 
of what you had not created. Chapter 11 Hema Private Pasture Narrated As Saab bin Jat Tama Allah's Messenger said, No Hema except for Allah and His Apostle. We have been told that Allah's Apostle made a place called An Naki As Hema and Umar made Ash Sharaf and Ar Rabada Hema for grazing the animals of Sakat. Chapter 12 Drinking water by people and animals from rivers. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger said, Keeping horses may be a source of reward to some men, a shelter to another, a yeah, means of earning one's living, or a burden to a third. He to whom the horse will be a source of reward is the one who keeps it in Allah's cause, prepare it for holy battles, and ties it by a long rope in, pa in a pasture or a garden. He will get a reward equal to what its long rope allows it to eat in the pasture of the, or the garden. And if that horse breaks, breaks its rope and crosses one or two hills, then all its footsteps and its dung will be counted as good deeds for its owner. And if it passes by a river and drinks from it, then that will also be regarded as a good deed for its owner, even if he has had no intention of watering it then. Horses are a shelter from pro po horses are a shelter from poverty to the second person who keeps horses for earning his living so as not to ask others and at the same time he gives Allah's right ye rakat from the wealth he earns through using them in trading etc and does not overburden them. He who keeps horses just out of pride and for showing off and as a means of harming the Muslims, his horses will be a source of sins to him. When Allah's messenger was asked about donkeys, he replied, Nothing particular was revealed to me regarding them except the gener general unique verse which is applicable to everything. Whoever does goodness equal to the weight of an atom or a small or small ant shall see it shall see it its reward on the day of resurrection. Narrated Said bin Khalid. A man came to to Allah's messenger and asked about Al Lukata, a fallen thing. The Prophet said recognize its container and its tying material and then make a public announcement about it for one year and if its owner shows up to give it to him otherwise use it as you like the man said what about a lost sheep the prophet said it is for you your brother or the wolf the man said what about a lost camel the prophet said why should you take it as it has got its water container, its stomach, and its hooves, and it can reach the places of water and can eat the trees till its owner finds it? Chapter 13 The Selling of Wood and Grass Narrated as Zubayr bin al Awam. The Prophet said, No doubt one had better take a rope and cut and tie a bundle of wood and sell it, whereby Allah will keep his face away from hellfire rather than ask others who may give him or not. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger said, no doubt you had better gather a bundle of wood and carry it on your back and earn your living thereby rather than ask somebody who may give you or not. Narrated Hussein bin Ali Ali bin Abi Talib said, I got a she camel as my share of the war booty on the day of the Battle of Badr. 
and Allah's Messenger gave me another she-camel. I let both of them kneel at the door of one of the Ansar, intending to carry Idkir, Idkir on them to sell it and use its price for my wedding banquet on marrying Fatima, a goldsmith from Bani Kainaka, Kain, Kainka was with me. Hamza bin Abdul Mutalib was in that house drinking wine and a lady singer was reciting O oh Hamza, kill the two fat old she-camels and serve them to your guests. So Hamza took his sword and went towards the two she-camels and cut off the, their humps and opened their flanks and took a part of their livers. I said to Ibn Shihab, did he take part, part of the humps? He replied, he cut off their humps and carried them away. Ali further said, When I saw that dreadful sight, I went to the Prophet and told him the news. The Prophet came out in the company of Said bin Harita, who was with him then, and I too went with him. He went to Hamza and spoke harshly to him. Hamza looked up and said, Aren't you only the slaves of my forefathers? The Prophet retreated and went out. This incident happened before the prohibition of drinking. Chapter 14 The Uncultivated Pieces of Land Narrated Anas The Prophet decided to grant a portion of the uncultivated land of Bahrain to the Ansar. The Ansar said, We will not accept it till you give a similar portion to our emigrant brothers from Karish. He said, O oh Ansar, you will soon see people giving preference to others, so remain patient till you meet me on the day of resurrection. Chapter 15 Documentation of the Land Grants Narrated Anasra The Prophet called the Ansar so as to grant them a portion of the land of Bahrain. They said, O oh Allah's Messenger, if you grant this to is write a similar document on our Karish emigrant brothers. But the Prophet did not have enough grants and he said, After me you will see the people giving preference to others, so be patient till you meet me. Chapter 16 Milking She Camels at Water Places Narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, One of the, the rights of a she camel is that it should be milked at a place of water. Chapter 17 To pass through a garden or to have a share in date palms. Narrated Abdullah Ra said, I heard a messenger of Allah say, If somebody buys date palms after they have been pollinated, the fruits will belong to the seller unless the buyer stipulates the contrary. If somebody buys a slave having some property, the property will belong to the seller unless the buyer stipulates that it should belong to him. Narrated Said bin Fabit the Prophet permitted selling the dates of the Araya for ready dates by estimating the amount of the former as they are still on the trees. Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah The Prophet forbade the sales called Al Mukabara, Al Muhakala, and Al Musabana and the selling of fruits till they are free from blights. He forbade the selling of the fruits except for money, except the araya. Narrated Abu Huraira The Prophet allowed the sale of the dates of the araya for ready dates by estimating the former, which should be estimated as less than 5 avsuk or 5 avsuk. Dawood, the sub-narrator, is not sure as to the right amount. Narrated Rafi bin Khadij and Sal bin Abi Hotma. 
Allah's Messenger forbade the sale of Musabana, e selling of fruits for fruits, except in the case of Araya. He allowed the owners of Araya such kind of sale.